Hello, everyone. Um, happy Friday, and thanks for joining Automation Hour. And, all right. So if you are joining us for the first time, all lines are muted. Please post your questions to the Trailblazer Community Salesforce Automation Hour. We'll be checking there for Q&A in a little bit. Um, and do note that the recording as well as the deck will be posted after the session in our Trailblazer Community Salesforce Automation Hour, as well as our website, automationhour.com. And um, I'm happy to present. Uh, we have a session scheduled into 2020 already. Um, so your co-hosts for Automation Hour are coming back to present um, starting at the beginning of the year. So um, do go out on automationhour.com and those uh, sessions are available for you to register. Even if you cannot attend live, I recommend registering for them anyways, and then you'll You'll get the link to the recording after the fact. And if you have a business use case with a cool automation solution that you would like to share with those in the community, direct message us. And um, as we're starting to schedule July um, onward, we will include you in that email as well. So we have a lot of community members, MVPs um, coming on to present. And we cannot bring this free online webinar series without our sponsor, Concrete IO. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And here are your co-hosts, David Rykesh and myself. This was from Midwest Dreamin. And all three of us will be at Dreamforce, which will be later this month. So in a couple of weeks, we will see you there. And we're really excited to have Rita back. She's presented before, um, and uh, she will be doing a side-by-side -side comparison today of Process Builder and Flow with Apex. So with that, let me hand it over to Rita. And Rita, you should have control now. OK. Can All right, I can see, see your screen. I can see oh. your screen. OK. Okay, that's not what I want. Uh, okay, so I hope everyone's having a good day today. Happy Friday. I hope you have lots of good things planned for the weekend. And whoever is uh, having trouble with the rain, don't float away. Um, okay, so. I decided to get really ambitious with this. We'll see how it works out. So the idea is to show process builder nodes and flow, of course, and the corresponding APEX code. Uh, after we see side by side, we'll try a demo of with the uh, process builder and flow, and also a demo with the APEX. And if I remember to compare the uh, analytics and debug, I'll do that. And then we'll have questions and answers at the end. So this was the use case. When a task is created or updated, number one, populate the next task date field on the count. And two, set the case status based on the tax, task status. <laughs> um, the idea was if the, um, if, if the if ta uh, tasks are assigned to the case and once a task is, is started, then we wanted the case to reflect that as well. And once all the tasks on a case are completed, then the case should automatically be closed. So why would you need to know? Uh, if you know Apex, why do you need to know Process Builder Flow? If you know Process Builder Flow, why do you need to know Apex? Well, sometimes stuff happens. Uh, you might want to go from Process Builder and Flow to Apex because uh, your business has grown, you're getting 
a lot more record volumes and process good and flow only it's only designed to handle one record at a time and you can start hitting government limits and of course you know apex is bulkified it can handle large record volumes much more easily and why would you go from a Apex to process build and flow. Well, if you're a small org and you only have, you don't even have a dedicated administrator. If all you have is Apex code, any little change that you want to make is going to require a developer. So the uh, the um, best, best practice in Salesforce is clicks, not code. So you always want to do your clicks first and, unless it's absolutely necessary to write code. So it would be a lot easier for your admins to handle changes. So, oh, and I wanted to mention that uh, those of you who know triggers, all process builder flows, the equivalent would be after triggers. So you wouldn't use a before trigger to replace a process builder and flow. It's, everything happens after an update, so it will always be an after trigger. So here's our process. And we're going to start with a task because the task object is driving this. So when a task is created or edited, this is the corresponding apex trigger. And I elected to separate the logic into an apex class. Um, that's probably the only best practice I'll do today for apex code. Uh, I'll do my best, but uh, if you should take your logic out of the trigger itself. So your trigger should be small. And the only thing they should ever do is call an apex class. So in this case, if it's if the trigger is after and is update or is insert, we will call this class that is called uh, task trigger helper, and the uh, the method is called next task date on account. And what we're using as a parameter argument, uh, one of the two, uh, the trigger new, which is just the collection of uh, tasks that would happen if we were doing a bulk update. So the next node, does the account exist? And it, uh, these are the fields that are being checked. And I wrote them out for the first two, so you can see. We're looking for the count ID is not null. Last modified date change is true. And task is closed is false. And we have the same kind of logic here in the Apex code. Account ID not no, activity date is not no, and is closed is false. And so if all this is true, we go to our immediate action which is a flow called set next task date. Well, 
the name of the the name of the notice set next day down the count flow is get next task date and everything that mentions op or opportunity i just want you to ignore uh simply because when i went through all this and finished everything i realized i kind of forgot that part but since it's similar to something else that we're going to do uh we don't have to worry about it too much just because it's similar to what we do with case anyway so it's not a big loss but anyway uh as i said before this method next task date on account is what we're going to use to handle the logic for this so here's our flow get next task date and the first thing you want to do is get um we're gonna get some records right you're gonna get the next task oh but before we get the next task this is the entire code for the uh, method next task date on account and it's bringing in what was trigger new that collection of tasks is the input here and we'll be going through bits of this code as we go oh and here's the rest of it uh, this is the other method update case from task list and we'll get to that closer to the end and i and as i mentioned if we had done the uh, opportunity update it would be similar to this anyway so don't worry about that okay so we're going to get task records and we see this logic again uh, here are our inputs if the account ID on the task is equal to the input account ID, activity date is um, not null and is closed is false. And here's the same code in Apex. And this account set this is something special that we have to do for Apex because we could be bringing in hundreds or thousands of records uh, with account IDs. So we want to get these accounts and we want all the tasks associated with these accounts. So that's why we're checking for the account ID in this account set okay so once we get the records then we want to sort the task records but in this case at least with the uh, we want to sort it but because we're getting the next task date we really only want one record we want the next task that's going to be due based on the due date. So in our flow, we're only going to store the first record and we're storing the field values in separate variables. In this case, we call it bar next due date, where we will store the activity date of that task record. And this is the apex code where we try to do the same logic. Restoring the account ID. Uh, well, we create an account, well, an account object. 
uh, once that I, if we have the same account ID, so we store it uh, in A dot ID and uh, the, the activity date from the task is stored in A dot next task date. And we're still ordering by by account ID and activity date. And we're well, let's see, let's go on. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Okay, so uh, for all the tasks, if the account ID, if the account IDs are different, then we're assuming that it's the new. Uh, it's the first record of the sorted activities, activity dates. So that will be the next date due for that account ID. Because as it um, as it loops, let's say if there's another task with the same account ID, well, we don't want it because we already have the next one available. Okay, so next we're going to update the account. So for the account ID that we've been working with, we are going to fill that next task date field with our variable next due date. And with the apex, basically it's the same thing. Uh, we add the uh, account ID and then we update the account list when we're done because it was bulkified. Okay, and then the next, oh, okay. So that's really it. Uh, as I say, we're going to bypass the opportunity because all we cared about right now, I wanted to show you how to update the account. So we're just going to go to our second part of the process builder. So when we're done, we evaluate the next criteria is is the task in progress or completed? Basically, is it still open? Or has it changed to progress or completed? And it's true. And uh, this is the trigger, which now is calling the method update case from task. And again, it's passing in the task from the trigger. And this is the code for that entire method. Uh, okay, and this is the logic in the process builder. So we want the what ID is not null. Uh, one and four. Okay. And the ID is not null. And the task status is either in progress or completed. So let me do something a little bit different here. We put in some logic where we have uh, one and four and two or three. Of course, you add your parentheses to make sure that you must have one or the other. And this is the same, this is the same thing in Apex. The what ID is null, it's not null. Uh, if, the state, if the status is in progress, 
or if it's completed. And we'll, we'll come back to that. There's more. Okay. So in our process, uh, our flow, the flow variable, uh, we want to set our flow variables in the uh, case. No. No. Uh, you know, we're setting our flow variables to our inputs. So uh, I, I lost. I lost track. Ha! Huh, no, we're still in our process builders. Sorry about that. Okay, so in our process builder, uh, we're setting our task, our input to the task fields, what ID, status, and task ID. And that's what we're doing with our Apex. doing okay here's our flow now this was a little tricky because we only want to work with we only want to update the case if the task is associated with a case so in our process we did a calculation where uh, no, I don't think I showed that. Okay, so we're check. We're actually checking the first three characters of the what ID field, and for case, the first three characters would be 500, and that's what we're checking. But Apex is a little bit different. We can get more precise. Uh, we can do something with since we're working with an object, an S object, there are methods available to us so that we can use the get S object type dot get describe dot get name equals case. So for some reason, the IDs changed and hopefully that would not happen. You can just get it by name. So one of the one of the advantages of using Apex. Okay, so then we check the tax, task status. Now either it's complete or in progress. So if it's in progress, we wanna change the case status to working. We also want to set the what ID to the case ID, and then we will add that to our C list, our case list, because we're making a collection. We don't want to do any updates until we have all the records that we want to update. We will do them all at once. So if the case is in progress in our flow, we'll set the case record status to working and make sure that we have the case record ID, which was our in our input related to ID. And we set our variables here in our apex. And, excuse me, and finally, we update the case status. We do the actual update. So, uh,
Okay, so we find the records to update by using the ID and all the field values from a record variable, a record collection variable. Our record collection variable is called SOFIC case rec in our flow. But Apex code is just update C list. We had a, we had a collection, all we have to do is update it. Okay, so, okay, um, so our other condition was if the T, if the status equals completed, then we have to do something a little different. We need to get all the case tasks for that case, for the case ID. So to get the objects, to get the records of this task object, we want the ones where their what ID is the same as our input ID. And that's where we have the same logic in our apex code. And we also want them to be open. So we want all the records And this is checking uh, the apex is checking to see if there are any records. If there are no tasks that are open, then it's assuming all the tasks are closed and it's going to set the case status to close. Okay. So we're going to back up a little bit. As it, if, if it turns out that uh, they're not all closed. Well, this is the loop and it's always, it's just going to check. Um, is it the right ID? And is it closed? Okay. So if the task status equals to completed, And if it's open, if we find tasks that are open, then we're not going to close the case because we still have open tasks. And uh, this apex code will automatically know what size the collection is so we don't have to actually have a counter the way we would have to do here in the flow see we would add one to the open task okay so it's closed Yes, they're all closed now. So once they're all closed, and you assume they're all closed here because the, uh, the number of open tasks is equal to zero or possibly no, turns out it's zero, but that's fine. So same logic in your apex code.
make the size of zero. Uh, you do your assignment in the flow. You set your case record status to closed. And make sure that you have your related to ID and your case record ID. Oh, and then do the update case status just like we did before. Just update the C list. Uh, any questions with that before we do the demo? Hey, Rita. Um, one question that we had um, from the audience is, um, is the code available on GitHub or will be available? Hmm. That's, in, that's an interesting challenge. I, I can make that available. Let me make a note of that. Uh, yeah, and I will, I will announce when that happens. Wow, is, is it that good? I feel good. <laughs> oh, thank you, whoever asked that. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, oh, okay. So here's the fun part. Uh, okay. Okay, I guess we just create a case. Uh, Use my account. Oh, okay. That's my account. Uh, new. Hmm. Ah, there it is. Okay. Let's call it. Demo case, yeah, demo case. Uh, okay. Oh, really? Hmm. I thought these were the same. Hmm. Okay. So the first thing we're going to check, we'll see if the uh, account has the proper next task date field on it. Okay, so we'll just create some and not necessarily in order.
Oh, before I do that. Before I do that. I don't think it cares if I start it or not. So I put it down for the eighth. Oh, that's the old one. Should have used somebody different, shouldn't I? Okay, but well, you see it turned to working when I changed to uh, in progress. And let's see if we get a task date. Well, it worked yesterday. Oh no. Oh no, it's not working. Why? Do this. Okay. Okay, let's do a new task. Oh, okay, I don't know why this is not working. Shall we have a debug session? <laughs> well, let's see if the apex works. Thanks. Okay. Oh, that's why these things aren't working. I still have some old stuff in here. Okay. Well, that will do it. Well, let's put it this way. The next one is the 25th. It's still open, so that's why it's still there. So this should change.
change. Then I just close that. Just now. Oh, okay. Next task, 11, 8, 28, 2019. Okay, something's working. That's good. So if I do another one. And get it today. Eleven five, just as expected. Now, just to make sure that it's just not taking the last one I put in, let's put something in the middle. So if I do this right, the task should not change. And it did not change, cool. Because the next task is 11.5. So the date changed properly. Let's make sure that the case gets closed. Okay. There it is. Okay, I'm not crazy. I am kind of crazy. Okay. All right, so I accidentally put them against the account instead of the task. I mean, instead of the uh, case. Uh, even so, it should still work. 
And it's closed. Ta da. All right, at least that one worked. You know what happened here? Okay, these are our case. Well, that's a bus. <laughs> okay, well, that's a surprise that the apex worked <laughs> and, and the process builder didn't quite. Ah, wow, that's quite amazing. Anyway, uh, Let's see if we can pull up any analytics. I don't know if we can tell anything. So this is the um, apex. Yeah, it has a trigger. Oh, okay, we go to the bottom. Okay, I don't even have the right kind of analytics. Okay, but we're not going to have a good comparison there. But as you can tell, that uh, we only had two SQL queries, two SQL queries out of 100, one DML statement, one DML row, and Zero, C, zero CPU time, that's pretty cool. It went very quickly. So there's a lot of wiggle room if you had to use a large, a, a large volume of records. 
And uh, I'm going to have to investigate the uh, process builder flow. I don't know what happened there. Because it worked yesterday. Of course, you know, I was looking. Uh, are there any more questions? Uh, and there, there was one question. Um, is there a risk of reaching Sockwell limits since it is used within a for loop? I think there is a risk. I didn't want to do that. But I, like I panicked a little bit. I couldn't think of how else to do it. I think there's a better way to do it, but my, my brain went dead. So <laughs> yeah, I, I would advise against not not doing that. All right. Um, folks on the line, are there any other questions? You could um, post them in the question section. Let me just do a quick refresh of the Trailblazer community. And um, it could be a question about Rita's presentation or a general process automation question. We'll take those as well. Give it a minute or so. Irina says, thank you, Rita. <laughs> uh, let me just refresh again to see if anything new has come in. So um, someone did ask in the beginning, um, maybe you all didn't catch that, but um, to register for our upcoming webinars, go to automationhour.com. Um, and then all the links to our um, sessions that are booked out through July of next year are available there. So I don't see any other questions. Our um, next automation hour will be um, actually next month in December. We're going to take some time um, to all gear up for uh, Dreamforce um, as well as the Thanksgiving holiday. So we won't return back until December 6th with Matt Godfrey. Um, so with that, I am going to close out Automation Hour. So thank you, Rita, for presenting. And um, have a great day, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.